Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a homemade polynomial system. Actually, a system of two polynomials, kind of like a tale of two cities. So this is kind of like a new idea that occurred to me and I just wanted to share with you. I hope you like it. Please let me know what you think. So we have two polynomials, p of x plus q of x equals x squared plus x minus 2. And their product is equal to a cubic, as you can see here. So I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So the first method, I apologize in advance, is going to be a little painful, but I'm hoping that uh, you're going to learn a lot from it. Okay, that's the goal. It's not to torture you, but to help you learn something new. So for my first method, I'm going to isolate q of x from the first equation. So I'm going to subtract p of x from this and then substitute it into the second equation because notice that I have q of x in my second equation which basically can be replaced with this. Make sense? Let's go ahead and do that but while we're doing this let's also replace p of x with p to simplify things a little bit because p is going to repeat a few times and I don't want to write p of x every time. Okay? So we're going to get the following. p of x which is p times q of x, which is x squared plus x minus 2 minus p, remember we replace p of x with p, equals the cubic, which is x cubed, right, minus 3x squared plus x minus 3. I know what you're thinking at this point, I'm like, come on, this is too easy, way too obvious, you can just do this, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's just wait, don't spoil the surprise until we get to the second method, okay? So, let's go ahead and distribute. While we distribute, I don't want to distribute the p completely, but I want to keep this x part uh, as an entity and just multiply by p times p and then the right hand side is just going to stay as is and then I want to put everything on the right hand side and because my goal is to write this as a quadratic in p as you can see we have p and p squared I don't care what the coefficients are they are polynomials but we can still do it so let's put everything on the same side I mean on the right hand side p squared and then I'm going to have the coefficient of p as a negative sign so it's going to look like this it's easy to write it that way instead of distributing because we're going to negate b anyways right for the quadratic formula let's go ahead and write this as follows and then the cubic is going to follow and then we're going to get it equal to zero okay now do you see that does it look like a quadratic for you that's uh, if that doesn't i'm going to go ahead and use a different color to indicate that, uh, I, hopefully this is going to be a little better. As you can see here, this is a quadratic in P, and the coefficients are polynomials. Okay, that doesn't matter, right? Hopefully it doesn't. Now we're going to solve this, obviously, since this is quadratic, let's use the quadratic formula. So P equals from here, negative B, X squared plus X minus 2, plus minus the square root of B squared. Obviously, that quadratic is going to be squared is kind of like a quadratic within quadratic minus 4ac a is 1 so I'm gonna multiply the whole cubic by negative 4 so that means I have to distribute and then that's gonna be under the radical and that's going to be my discriminant in other words Delta so Delta which is a Greek letter it looks like a triangle and now I can go ahead and isolate it because let's go ahead and simplify the discriminant first and then we can just plug it in. It's a lot easier instead of writing this gigantic radical every time. So here's my discriminant and let's see how I can simplify it. So I'm going to square a plus b plus c. As you know it's x to the fourth plus x squared plus 4 and then we're going to do the 2ab, 2ac and 2bc. 2x cubed plus 2 4x squared plus 4x, right? You're going to two-way multiply them. And then this is going to turn into what? We're going to follow We're going to follow this by, oh, by the way, I just messed up here. It's supposed to be x squared plus x minus 2. I don't know why I turned into a plus sign. Sorry about that. Let's fix it real quick. And then I do have to fix this one too. That's going to be a minus sign. Okay, great. And then obviously that's going to change my square too. Not the first three terms, but everything else. Okay, and then we're going to have 2x cubed. And then these two is going to give me a minus 4x squared. And these two is also going to give me a minus 4x. And then just distribute to negative 4. Okay, 
you should get this. And then if we simplify this, we should get x to the fourth. And then let's look at x cubed. I have 2x cubed minus 4x cubed. That means minus 2x cubed. And then how many x squared I have? I have 1x squared plus 12, that's 13. Minus 4 is going to make 9x squared. And then I, I have to do x next, which is negative 4 and negative 4. That's going to make negative 8x. And finally, I got my constants, 4 plus 12, which is equal to 16. Now, wouldn't it be nice if my discriminant is a perfect square? And it actually is. Why? First of all, you should definitely check that out because this is x squared squared and this is 4 squared. So what are you missing? You're missing the middle term. So let's go ahead and write this as x squared plus ax plus 4 squared. Let's go ahead and expand this. When we expand this, we're going to get the following. x to the fourth, and let me give you the re rearranged form. You're going to get something like this. And then 8ax plus 16. Okay, if you arrange the terms like, combine like terms, you're going to get the following. And guess what? We're supposed to set this equal to our discriminant, which is x to the fourth minus 2x cubed plus 9x squared minus 8x plus 16. Well, quite a few things are matching up. Let's see how this works. Now, notice that the coefficient of x cubed is 2a, which is supposed to be negative 2. This is supposed to be 9. This is supposed to be negative 8. Everything else checks out. So this means a is equal to negative 1, or a is equal to plus minus 1, or a is equal to negative 1, which means a is equal to negative 1, which means the discriminant is equal to x squared minus x plus 4 squared. This is our delta, remember? So this is our discriminant. It's a perfect square, and that is perfect because we can just plug it in. Let's do it. So what was our uh, p equal to? p is equal to that, so I'm going to just copy that x squared plus x minus 2, and then plus minus the square root of delta, but it's just going to be without the square, right? Because we're square rooting a square, divide by 2. Easy, right? Now let's go ahead and write each solution. First solution is going to be when we add these up, right? We're just going to add them. Okay, x cancels out. 2x squared minus plus 2, divide by 2, that's going to be x squared plus 1. And the other p-value, and if you want, you can call these p sub 1 and p sub 2, x squared plus x minus 2, minus x squared plus x minus 4. We just subtract the whole thing. And then here, x squared cancels out. We add x plus x, 2x minus 6, which is x minus 3, when divided by 2. Make sense? Okay, great. So we got two solutions, So, but those are p-values. What about the q-values? Well, p and q are interchangeable. If p of x is equal to x squared plus 1, then q of x is just going to be the other one, and vice versa. So if p of x is equal to x minus 3, then the q of x will be the other value, which is x squared plus 1. And this brings us to the end of the first method, and let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick, because second method is real quick. Okay, so let me rewrite the problem. p of x plus q of x is equal to x squared plus x minus 2 and p x q x is equal to x cubed minus 3x squared plus x minus 3. So I'm going to start by factoring p x q x because that's the product of two polynomials. Come on, who wouldn't do that, right? And like, why did you do the first method? Okay, just for fun. So Let's go ahead and factor it. This is factorable by grouping, so I can go ahead and take out x squared, x minus 3, 1, x minus 3. So px qx becomes x squared plus 1 times x minus 3. Okay, great. Then does that mean p of x is one of them and then q, x, q of x is the other? It should be that way, but let's look at their sum. p of x plus q of x should be the sum of these two things, x squared plus 1 plus x minus 3, and that's indeed x squared plus x minus 2, which is what we have. Yay, awesome. So this works, which means p of x is this one, and q of x is this one, or the other way around. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.